Ok, looks like we have a new record. The researchers, whose paper you can find in the description, have just confirmed the smallest star ever discovered. Smallest in terms of volume or size, not mass. Although in this case, it's important to define what we mean by star. This is still a main sequence star, meaning that it still has fusion. Different from an object like a neutron star that's even smaller in size, or a white dwarf that's smaller as well. But none of those are technically stars. The more accurate term is degenerate star. A star containing degenerate matter, but no more fusion and no more nuclear reactions. In this case though, we actually have what's known as a hot subdwarf, which basically didn't just break a record, but also just sort of rewrote some of the theories behind star sizes in general. Because for a very long time, we always thought that the smallest types of stars are always going to be red dwarfs. So, you know, stars like Proxima Centauri, Trappist-1 and so on, the most common type in the galaxy, stars that are pretty much everywhere, and stars that were always thought to be the smallest by size. And obviously stars that are the focus of many different studies, mostly because pretty much all of them seem to contain terrestrial planets in their orbit, and quite a few of them contain planets in habitable zones. But that's beside the point. The point is that they don't seem to be the record holders, they don't seem to be the smallest. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss this relatively recent discovery, talk about what this means for astronomy, and obviously talk about the star and how it most likely formed. Because it was unlikely to have formed so small, and it was probably much bigger. But it is really small now. And let's maybe start with a comparison first. For this I had to bring out my old friend Universe Sandbox. So here's the Sun, here's Jupiter, and here's Earth. As you can see the size difference here is pretty dramatic. But it's these two last objects that we're kind of concerned with. So here is roughly what all of this would look like side by side. This right here is Trappist-1, one of the smallest red dwarfs known to us. As you can see, it's just a little bit larger than Jupiter in terms of size, but obviously much more massive. It's about 93 masses of Jupiter. But then this newly discovered star, TMTS G0526, seems to be smaller than Jupiter. It's approximately 7 times as big as planet Earth, which is right here, and thus definitely beats all records, but also beats our previous assumptions about how small stars can get. Here this object that's approximately 2700 light years away from us seems to contain about one third of our sun in mass, so actually much more massive than Trappist-1, but is only 63% the size of Jupiter. And it's not even that hot, it's about 2200 degrees Celsius, technically even cooler than a typical red dwarf. And though if we found this object by itself somewhere out there, it would be one of the biggest mysteries in astronomy, one of the main reasons this object was discovered was because it's in a binary, but a very unusual binary. A binary that has an orbit of just 20 minutes, actually 20 and a half. So basically, every single hour, these objects go around each other three times. And that's technically unheard of. Ok, it's not unheard of for degenerate stars, so white dwarfs, neutron stars and so on. There are actually white dwarfs out there with even shorter orbits. But in this case, this binary contains that star and Ok, yeah, it's a white dwarf. But that's really important because it actually explains to us how this very likely formed. And so the only reason these two objects exist, have such a short orbit, and one of them is so ridiculously small, is because this used to be a binary system with two sun-like stars. But in this case, a very special binary with two stars basically touching. Now sometimes when these stars just touch and orbit each other this way, we call this a contact binary, but this can be at different levels, farther away or much closer, and sometimes it can actually be so close that they basically start to resemble a single object. This can be referred to as an over contact binary, or in more extreme examples, a common envelope binary. It basically resembles, I guess, a number 8, or I guess some kind of a spinning snowman. But because these are sun like objects, with time, as they get older and older, one of them will eventually start to expand. So in essence, kind of like our sun, becoming larger and larger in a process, eventually losing its envelope, and then at some point becoming a white dwarf and creating what's known as a planetary nebula. And so because one of the stars here is a white dwarf, we know that this is exactly what happened to that star. 
So what happened to the other? Well, here this idea has a name. Binary population synthesis. This other study from 2020 talks a little bit more about this. But in essence, there is a stage in the aging star known as a helium flash. It basically happens when the star starts to burn helium. And during this time, there is actually a relatively large explosion, which, if it happens inside a common envelope, will cause this envelope to escape and to affect both stars. And that can physically turn any sun-like star, or in a binary case, a smaller partner, into a sub-dwarf star that's going to have a total mass of about 45% of the Sun, which is actually something we've seen quite a lot around the galaxy, with a lot of these very similar stars explained in a similar way. But in this case, or in this binary system, this common envelope and this explosion based on the helium flash very likely happened not once, but twice. Specifically because of the second star that now reached its stage. And so because of this, the common envelope decreased in size even more, thus creating an object that's even smaller, a third of the Sun. Which is precisely what we see in this particular binary. And so in this case, the theory and the predictions from 2020 explain this really well. And so we can actually only find these really small stars if they have some kind of a white dwarf partner in a very close orbit. And here this is actually, I guess, also a record. It's technically the star with the shortest binary orbit, mostly because all of the other previous record holders were always white dwarfs. And as I mentioned before, they're not really stars. They're degenerate stars, or in some sense, they're basically stellar remnants. But here we do have an actual star in an orbit of just 20 minutes. This star is still conducting fusion and is still in its main sequence stage, something you can read more about in one of the studies in the description. And intriguingly, the researchers here also suggest that this is possibly an absolute orbital minimum. Basically, this is as low as it gets. They don't actually think it might get any lower, because at that point, either the star will change as well, becoming a white dwarf, or the white dwarf might start completely destroying the star because of its much higher density and the tidal effects, thus eventually causing nova and turning the star into something else, maybe even a planet. Now, as a matter of fact, at the moment, it's not entirely clear what the future of the system is yet and what exactly this will become. But by being such an exciting discovery and such an exciting star, I'm sure we'll have some explanations really soon. Either way though, a really exciting discovery and obviously a multiple record holder and, officially, the smallest star in the galaxy, at least as of 2024. Once we discover something else about this, or someone discovers something even more mysterious and more unusual, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.